Hello. Welcome to part two in a series of lectures on how to shoot the sun at local apparent noon for a position fix. In part one of this, this series, we discuss the mechanics of using the sextant and shooting the sun. In this lecture today, I'm going to discuss with you some of the principles behind what we're doing, how it works, and why it works. We're going to do that by stepping through a PowerPoint presentation as I present this material. Okay, we're going to be observing the sun at local apparent noon for a position fix. My name is Chris Kreitlein and I'm a navigation instructor with Globus Horizon. I'll be presenting this, this uh, series of lectures to you. In part one, once again, we talked about the mechanics of shooting the sun. In this part, we're going to begin our discussion of how to reduce the observation to a latitude and longitude. Now, traditionally in celestial navigation, we reduce a sight, an observation, down to a line of position. The standard method for doing this that is prevalent today, the most common and actually the easiest method, is called the intercept method using an assumed position. That is the method that I teach in my book, Simple Celestial, which is published by Globus Horizon and available at Globazon.com. However, there is an alternate method, and that involves observing the sun at local apparent noon. It does not require use of sight reduction tables. The only thing you need is a, is a current nautical almanac. What are some of the tools necessary? Well, once again, you're going to need an almanac. Uh, here are two older ones. The one in orange is published by the government. The, the one in blue is published by a civilian publishing firm. And it contains the exact same material, but it's a lot cheaper. So that's obviously the one you want to buy. You're going to need one for each year. We do not need sight reduction tables, and that saves us a lot of problems, a lot of work. You are going to need a digital watch set to universal time, and we'll talk about that later. You need a good form to work with. This form is our noon sight form for the sun at local apparent noon. I'll discuss this form in depth as we go along. This form is available for you to download for free at globizon.com. You're going to need a calculator and one that works with degrees. These are available for about $14 from Walmart. Of course, we're going to need plotting tools, divider, parallel rulers, and a universal plotting sheet to plot the results of our fix. Now, as I mentioned before, the standard method uh, for doing celestial navigation used by professional navigators is the intercept method with an assumed position. You observe heavenly bodies for a position fix. This, this method is very versatile. There's 57 stars you can use, four planets, the sun and the moon. Uh, and you can use them, the sun and the moon, of course, during any time you can see them. The stars at dusk at what we call civil twilight in the evening or in the morning as they're visible as long as you have a horizon that you can use. This method solves what's called the celestial navigation triangle. It's a little difficult to learn how to do this and it takes about 45 minutes to work through a site. But it does produce, or it can produce if you do it right, a very excellent fix. And as I mentioned, this is the way professional navigators determine their position using the stars, the sun, or the planets. Now, the sun at noon is a little bit different. You only use the sun. Well, you could use the moon, you could use a bright star, but it has to be on your meridian, uh, which I'll explain later. So that makes it a little problematic um, to just catch the moon just as it's on your meridian or a star while you can still see the horizon is difficult. The sun, however, as long as you can see the sun and the horizon at your local noontime, then um, you can use it. Uh, there's no celestial navigation triangle to solve, so you save yourself that hassle. 
Uh, this method is relatively short, quick, and easy, and it generally produces an, a, an acceptable position fix. Now, as we start here, we need to go through some nautical astronomy. First thing uh, we have here is the Earth with some meridian lines laid out. These are meridian lines of longitude, stretching uh, from the pole to the pole around the Earth. Now, the Sun crosses these lines, these meridian lines, as it arcs across the sky during the day. And it does so at 15 degrees of longitude each hour. This is a critical phenomenon for celestial navigation. It's really what makes celestial navigation by the sun possible. That the sun conducts this very steady transit across the sky at 15 degrees per hour. You'll see how we use that later on. A second phenomenon that we have to bear in mind when we're shooting the sun is that it's not always in the same place every day at the same time. Why? Because it rises in the sky as summer comes and until the 21st of June, which is the first day of summer when it hits the Tropic of Cancer, and then it starts to descend again throughout the year. This, of course, causes our seasons of spring, summer, winter, and fall. But it certainly means that the sun is at a little different location in the sky every day. It doesn't move by much, but nevertheless it moves. This is called the sun's declination in the sky. And it's a critical point that we have to bear in mind as we use the sun to determine a position fix. Okay, now what is local apparent noon? Local apparent noon is the moment when the sun is exactly 180 degrees or 360 degrees from your position. It's also at the peak of its arc across the sky. That is noontime for you. You will note that and record it in what we call universal time that we'll describe in a minute. Now bear in mind, this is this does not happen necessarily at 12 o'clock your local time. Time zones are 15 degrees wide, so really they're irrelevant for what we're doing. What we want is the exact moment the sun reaches its peak in the sky. It may be 30 minutes prior to your local 12 o'clock or 30 minutes after your local 12 o'clock. Uh, it all depends on your exact position. So for us, local apparent noon is when the sun hits that point highest in the sky for the day and it'll be either 180 or 360 from your position. As we see graphically here from this sailboat, the sun is exactly 180 degrees south of this sailboat at its highest point in the sky for the day. That is local apparent noon. Now what I said you have to record it in universal time. Well universal time used to be called Greenwich Mean Time and it's based upon the sun's passage over the Greenwich Meridian, the meridian that passes through Greenwich, England. That meridian, of course, is zero degrees longitude and also has the name of Prime Meridian, the Prime Meridian. That local apparent noon at the Prime Meridian, of course, is when the sun is directly uh, 180 degrees from the Greenwich Observatory. Now, this is an all the entries in the Nautical Almanac, of course, are recorded in universal time so that they can be used by anyone anywhere in the world. So in order to use the Nautical Almanac, you've got to have some method of knowing universal time in order to make sense of the Nautical Almanac. You have to have a chronometer on board set to universal time. We never really talk about local time in navigation. Eastern Standard Time, Central Standard Time, really are irrelevant to us. What we talk is universal time. Now what is universal time? Once again it's when the Sun or the Sun's relationship to the prime meridian. 12 o'clock universal time is when the Sun is right over top of the prime meridian. That would be 12 o'clock universal time. Now how do you know universal time in your little sailboat? Well you buy a simple digital watch from Walmart or Kmart or wherever and set it to universal time. 
I recommend having a couple of them on board in case one of them fails. But keep this watch tuned to universal time, set on universal time. Another way is to have a shortwave radio on board. You can turn in certain, tune in certain frequencies and it gives you a time check of exactly the coordinated universal time at that very second. Okay, so another term that we need to be aware of is what's called Greenwich Hour Angle. It's the number of degrees you or anything else is west of the prime meridian. It's only measured westward from the prime meridian, so therefore it goes from 000 to 359 degrees west. 090 west longitude would have a Greenwich hour angle of 090. 175 east longitude would have a GHA of 185. Why? Because you're only measuring westward. That's understood that it's measured to the west. Entries in the Nautical Almanac are listed in their Greenwich hour angle not in longitude. That's why we have to understand Greenwich Hour Angle. Graphically, we can look at it this way. Here we have a sailboat at 060 degrees west longitude. That, all, that means it's at Greenwich Hour Angle of 60 degrees. Alright, from Greenwich. In the other direction, we have Greenwich here and we have a sailboat 060 degrees east longitude and that would correspond to having a GHA of 300. Okay, equation of time. Well, we're going to cover that in part three. So please tune in for part three of this lecture series.